Shalabaka Prada Katabala Daba. Make sure you are praying. Kam Prada Kabala Daba Shata Paradaba. Lam Brete Kaparada Baladaba Kata Prada Kashele Balada. Kam Po Shata Bala Kapris Kabala Kalia Dabala Daba Skibranda. Because it looks like the church is largely confused. I shared with you a few things from prophetic confusion to here and there. The interesting thing, when I was doing a little research for this message, I found something that shocked me. There were all kinds of ways that people married in the Bible. Let me give you a few. All kinds of ways. Good, bad, ugly. For instance, Hosea finds and marries a prostitute. Hosea chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. You don't need to write it, just listen. Moses finds a man with seven daughters. He waters the flock and carries a wife free of charge. Exodus 2 verse 16 to 21. Boaz buys a land and with that property he finds a poor lady and she becomes his wife. What a coincidence. Ruth chapter 4 from verse 5 to 10. Are you blessed? The Benjaminites in Jude 21 verse 19 to 25, they stole women and ran away with them. That's how the women, that's how they married. So just go to a camp, steal a woman, disappear with her. <clears throat> Jacob, he labored for seven years times two. Genesis 29 verse 15 to 30. Seven years of toiling and labor. Got the wrong wife, labored for another seven years, got the one he wanted. 14 years labor to get a wife. 29 verse 15 to 30 of Genesis. David, he kills Goliath, gets rich, marries the king's daughter, and frees his house from paying tax. That's how he got his wife. 1 Samuel 17 verse 25. The king swore that whoever defeats Goliath, he will give him his wife, he will make him rich, and the family will no longer pay tax. Ahasuerus, was rich enough to organize a beauty contest where all the virgins in the land were brought and he got a wife. Esther chapter 2 from verse 3 to 4. David kills Uriah and marries his wife. So in the Bible, people killed people and married their wife. Second Samuel 11. Solomon found out that marrying one or two is not the way. So he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Second Kings 11 verse 1 to 3. These are different skills and strategies. People explore this marriage thing in the Bible. 1,000 women in his life so that he can be faithful. And then Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 35 just said, look, all this thing is a mess. Let me just serve God and leave. And so he refused to get married. Now you see, I just did a little rundown. There were times when there are more like capturing slaves. You capture a slave and turn her into your wife. So if you read the Bible without the wisdom of the spirit, you will be deceived. Which of the methods will you choose? Kill a man's wife? Kill a man's husband? A woman's husband? And marry, and marry her? Or go to a vineyard and buy real estate? And everything in it, plus the woman, is a sign that is your wife. Or organize a beauty contest. And then do it like the bachelor. And then the finest becomes your wife. Or marry 1,000 women. Or defeat, ask federal government what they will give you. If you will fight terrorism. Maybe you marry the president's daughter. Anyway, the point here is this. There are many examples. The Bible, interestingly, now I don't know why exactly, but the Bible does not exactly give us a direct formula like salvation. You know when it comes to salvation, there's a formula. Is that true? There is a way you know you are not saved. There is a way you know you are saved. But for marriage, um, it seemed as though there was no exact formula. And I believe the reason is because we are dealing with human beings here. Hallelujah. But then I've been able to bring up a few things that I want us to look at. We may not have the time to consider two incidences in the Bible. Adam, the first marriage 
in Genesis 2.21. Let's just look at it if you can help us. Okay. Genesis 2.21. Let's just turn there so that we'll hurry up and pray. Genesis 2.21. I want to bring out a few points that will bless us. Genesis 2.21. Genesis 2.21, if you are there, say Amen. And the rib, listen, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. Now, the point here, the key verse, is verse 23. And Adam said, This is now what? Bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man watch this so the wife that adam married was made of the same material the same substance the same ideology the same conviction are we getting some points there now so adam married a woman who was made of the same substance if she was a lion their substance will not be compatible so we see compatibility as a key here it had to be a woman who was taken out of him had the same composition with him spiritual composition psychological composition biological composition you never marry a man or a woman that does not sustain the same composition with you there will be big trouble i wanted to talk on genesis 24 the story of isaac that's the first show in the bible where a man goes to look for a wife for another person but let's just jump that points to note there are no there is no physical formula provided for finding a wife but there are scriptural guidelines there is no physical formula in the bible the bible scatters guidelines and i've been able to bring five scriptures that if you use they will guide you to make a very godly decision ready number one proverbs 18 22 proverbs 18 22 if you can help us media let's just hurry up proverbs 22 proverbs 18 verse 22 okay look up please read with me inside and outside one to read who saw what Finded a wife, finded a good thing, and obtains favor. So automatically the Bible shows us that the process of getting a wife will demand responsibility on the part of the man. There will be action. It will involve you. The word find, it then says whosoever picks a wife or whosoever prays a wife to come whosoever finds a wife it gives an idea of searching it gives an idea of desire that means there will be commitment if you want to get married action will be required on your own part the bible says whosoever finds a wife you're not going to sit down where you are and want a lady to come and meet you it's not going to happen that way regardless of whether you saw a vision or not there will be an initiation there will be a step you must take number two amos chapter 3 verse 3 it buttresses on genesis chapter 2 amos 3 verse 3 very quickly please amos 3 verse 3 this is the grand key i believe to a successful marriage and relationship the key to a successful marriage is not love it has been proven again and again that love is not enough to keep marriage can two work together except they what be agreed the word be agreed is the word compatible 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 measures your degree of agreeableness spiritual agreeableness psychological agreeableness similarity in ideologies about god about money about life about parenting two will work together if they are compatible are you getting what i'm saying now very important that means come that means it doesn't matter whether 
I saw her in a vision or in a dream. Whether I saw myself wearing a bow tie and she was wearing a white wedding gown and a flower came from heaven and said, this flower is your marriage flower. I don't care what you saw or did not see. If there is no compatibility, imagine for instance that this is my wife. I get married to this young lady, right? And I'm praying in tongues. Or she is praying in tongues. And I'm turning and say, what is that? I don't believe in praying in tongues. Two are not working together. I believe in spending and wastage. I believe in my ego. I rather let children die to be giving donations to church. And that's not her mindset. You see that there is friction. So, what is your ideology about God? Bless you. What is your ideology about God? What is your ideology about money? What is your ideology about culture? Culture. Culture. What's your ideology about ministry? A man of God, for instance, goes to get a lady because she's fine. Have you seen whether what is her passion about ministry? Otherwise, she will be fine for nothing and destroy your church. When she's supposed to be a model, she cannot sacrifice. She can't lay down her life to be the mother figure for the church. Is God speaking to us? I want you to write this down and start it. Never. I don't care what you see in the spirit. Never, brothers, ask a lady out who you are not compatible with. You are going to destroy her or she will destroy you. Even if she does not have every ideology straightened out, does she have the teachability? Sisters, does he have the teachability? It's not just that he's in a jeep. What is his ideology about managing challenges? Otherwise, you are a Christian. You will get married to him. He tells you he's a Christian. And the next thing, he brings the tail of an antelope. Or the tail of any animal. And hangs it as a jazz. And says, see, I know I'm a Christian, but let me tell you. My great grandfather had this thing. It's like that in our culture. Everybody brings it. If you don't understand, just keep it there. That's supposed to be a Christian. He wakes up in the morning and he's making incantations on that tail. And you are saying, my goodness, what did I get married to? And you know by spiritual intelligence that you are in trouble. But you claim you are marrying a rich man. Now you've married disaster. Even if you never see one vision, even if you never hear anybody's name, by the time you find a lady that is compatible in ideology, I guarantee you, except the word of God is a lie, you will have an exceptional marriage. That is the reason why unbelievers, although when they married, they were not born again, because they had compatibility, they still are together. And Christians who are born again because they think born again will solve compatibility. The Bible says it is better to sit at the roof of your house than to be with a contentious and angry woman. You are a man of God. You know where God is taking you to. Now you go and carry a lady that is lazy. You carry a lady that is weak, crying over everything. Let me tell you, two of you are born again. But just know that, that that family is on its way to crash down. I tell you the truth. Don't, don't unnecessarily just spiritualize things and say, No, I know my God is able. This girl, the way she prays, Mr. Man, can is she going to be able to cook for you? That's the reason why I encourage people. The moment you start a relationship, part of the many responsibilities of the man is take the lady to your whether your church or your meeting place wherever is your primary place of spiritual feeding do you know what let me tell you if a brother in koinonia ask a lady out in koinonia the probability of them having an exceptional marriage is even above 90 percent why because their ideologies are similar they are hearing the same thing and they believe the same thing are you getting what i'm saying now not that we say, okay, we are fasting for 10 days and the wife is pulling her mouth all around 
and angry and saying this 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 thing yeah, i don't like all these kind of things so what kind of 10 day fast eh? what is all that and the man is saying look, look 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 we are going far we are going far or a woman who hates excellence and is ready to manage anything but the man is ready to stay verse number three proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 very interesting scripture when I stumbled across this, it blessed me in no small way. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says, houses and riches. Meaning, your father and mother, your parents, you can inherit houses and riches. But when it has to do with a woman, you must involve God. Are you hearing now? It says a prudent wife is from the Lord. Meaning if you ignore God, you throw God out of the equation because you believe that this God, every time God comes in, He messes my relationships and makes me to take a decision. Many people hate God until they enter a relationship. They now go to God and say, Lord, this is hereby introducing my life partner. And God will say, you chose it. Go ahead. By the time... You see Pepe in the, in the relationship or the marriage. You now turn and say, God, where were you? God says, I was here all the while. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come in. If you give me entrance. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. A prudent wife and by extension, a prudent husband is from the Lord. You cannot use the seeing of the eye. To know that a man will still be faithful after 10 years. Men can change. As at the time you meet the man, he doesn't have money. You don't know what his tendencies are. You cannot use the beauty and the physique of a lady just to believe that this is my wife. Oh God, no matter what you say, Mbakeba say Rija, a prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from the Lord. So involve God. These are the guidelines that the Bible gives us. So number one, there is a finding. You will take action. And for ladies, you will position yourself. Brothers, if you ever want a wife, stop sitting down and just saying visions and visions and visions. I will round up with the issue of visions. A prudent wife is from the Lord. Number four, Isaiah 30 verse 21. It's another guideline that the Bible gives us. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Very, very powerful. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30 21. Media 30 21, please. Isaiah 30. Okay. And thy ears shall what? Hear a voice behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left it says you will hear a voice in other words expect the leadership of the holy spirit in helping you choose a life partner expect it the bible gives you a guarantee that you will hear a voice leading you my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice And then lastly, Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Everybody read. This is the cost dimension of marriage and relationships. Ready? Want to read. seated not down first and counted the cost whether he has what sufficient to what finish not start the building not start the marriage which of you intending to build a marital tower will not first sit down and start counting the cost am i ready to pay the school fees of children Am I ready to be responsible over a woman and her family? Am I ready to live with one woman?
the days of my life and be faithful? Am I ready to grow old with this man and grow old with this woman? Am I ready to love her like my life? Am I ready to protect her? Am I ready to die for my family? This is a guideline. No matter what vision you see, no matter what dream you have, God will not count the cost for you. This is where we miss it. God can show you that shall harm is your wife. But if you don't count the cost, it will still fail. It does not mean God lied. Five scriptures that if any man uses sincerely as a guideline, you will make a good relationship. You will make an exceptional relationship. Now let me round up by saying this. According to scripture, the prophetic is not the doctrine or the primary channel through which God reveals life partners. No. While it is true that at least in two places in scripture, we see God directly involved in bringing revelation and confirmation about a, life, a man's life partner. Number one is the prophet Hosea. We see God himself asking him to go and marry a prostitute. But we understand that that was a prophetic message. Prophets, those people were, they were actors. God will literally use their life to act out a script and explain the harlotry of Israel to, the, to her. So he told Hosea to go and marry a prophet called Goma. And so that with her harlotry she will leave him. And then he will say the pain you feel is the pain I always feel when Israel goes to bow to other gods. Number one. Number two, we see Joseph being afraid, knowing that Mary was with child. He wanted to divorce her quietly. And the angel appears and gives a divine confirmation. Don't be afraid to take her as your wife. I, are you getting the point now? No other place I know in scripture where you find God giving direct revelations. No. There are guidelines. There are principles. Now, does God reveal spouses to people? Yes, he does. But I believe strongly that there are two conditions for that. Number one is based on your personal degree of intimacy and relationship with God. And your level of yieldedness to him. There is a way I can walk with God and earn certain privileges on, on the strength of my intimacy with him. I have so given all to God that he knows that whatever choice he makes for me, I am that dead to say yes to him. Based on that, God is able to open you up and give you the privilege of using visions and revelations. It is rather a unique case or use a prophet to speak to you. Another key that justifies prophetic revelation is the nature and the kind of assignment. There are certain kinds of assignment that will necessarily involve you marrying certain kinds of women or men. For instance, being in ministry. As a man of God, because of the nature of your call, God will not allow you to just marry anybody. You will find out that there are probings and there are dealings. God will be exceptionally meticulous. Aside from these two instances, every other means of marriage in the Bible is simply not just waiting for what you call God's timing. Are you seeing the mistake now? God's timing is when you become a husband, when you become a father, when you become what? When you become that, it is time for marriage. Because male and female, he created them. And God already gave a command, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. When woman was, was brought into the seed, God saw that it is good. So waiting forever to say, God wants me to marry in 2020. Or God wants me to marry at 50. That's why at 45 I'm not married. No, 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 no. It is absolutely up to you. If you delay marriage because you are trying to be a husband, a father, and a priest, I salute you. Don't let anybody push you under pressure and say marry. Or as a lady, if you feel that you need some space to become a wife, a mother, and a priest, I also salute you. 
because it is a sign of honor to both your husband and your wife respectively. So the church has been caught up in all these illusions because there has not been a very, we have complicated the issue of marriage whereas it is a very, very simple thing. Look at me. Any brother here that believes that you have trained yourself to be a husband, a father, and a priest, I guarantee you the gates are open for you for marriage and no demon in hell will stop you. And any lady that truly, you can know you are prepared. Some of you right now, at once you will stop praying. Oh God, when will he come? Right now you are seeing that truly, truly you are not prepared. Especially for the kind of person you want. Let me balance this. If you have a vision and a dream of a man or a lady, keep it to yourself and keep moving on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This advice is a blessed advice that will honor you. The Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. Whether it comes to pass, it should not ruin your life. Whether there is vision or not, we see in part and we prophesy in part. Whether there be tongues, they will go away. Whether there be prophecy, they will end. But thy word, O Lord, is settled in heaven. Prophecy and visions should never be exalted above.